Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Getting Started with EarthCash. Uh, today, we're going to hear from me a little bit, your moderator, Maureen, uh, as well as our two speakers, Scott and Andre. So Andre is going to walk you through a little tour of our platform, show you how easy it is to set your pipelines, and then Scott's going to walk you through some of the newest and coolest features of EarthCash. So in this very quick webinar, you're going to see, as I mentioned, a brief tour of EarthCash. Uh, we're going to walk you through how easy it is to set a pipeline so you can start receiving Earth observation data today, uh, whether it's archival data or whether you want to set up uh, searches for future data. And then we're going to walk you through some of the newest features of our platform. So uh, now to give you a brief tour, I'm going to pass this on to Andre. Good morning. Thanks, everyone, for showing up to our EarthCache webinar. My name is Andre, the Customer Success Manager here at Skywatch. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a look quickly at um, EarthCache, trying to find out what a pipeline is, um, and basically seeing how we can help you um, make your development cycle or your development process easier, faster. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the overview page. Now, on the overview page, you have several fields here that you can actually see. So at the top, of course, you have EarthCache. And then underneath you have documentation, support, and account details. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through these a little bit just so that you can get familiar with navigating through the EarthCache platform. So underneath documentation, you have Get Started. So if we click on this link, that takes us to our documentation about getting started. And as you can see, there is a vast amount of information here that you can use. It's at your disposal. At any point in time, if you need reference or information, you can actually just come here and get the information that you need. So if I go back to the dashboard, there's also release notes. So moving forward, uh, we here at Skywatch are going to be basically updating the change log. Um, so as we make changes, you'll be able to follow that chronologically to see how we've grown, how we've made EarthCache better uh, for our users. If we go back to the dashboard, in the middle section, you should see support. So if I click on contact support, this will immediately open an email field where you can actually type in your problem or your question or any concerns that you might have and then select submit request. Alternatively, you could select product feedback. From here, you'd be able to give us suggestions, um, any kind of like uh, hints or anything like that you'd like to give to us and then submit that. So we'll go right back to the uh, overview page. And then finally, to the far right, you have account details. Right at the top, you'll see an API key. That would be your API key when you log into your EarthCache dashboard. Underneath, change password. This is self-explanatory. Billing, this is where you can update your credit card information. And finally, your end user license agreement. So with that finished, what we're going to do is we're going to hit Get Started. Now, this immediately bypasses any previous pipeline view that you have. This takes you right into the idea of creating a new pipeline. Normally, you would see your pipeline in the section where it says your pipeline will be pop will populate here. You would see a list of all the pipelines that you've created, whether they're active or inactive. In order to view all of your pipelines, you could simply hit cancel at the upper right. And as you can see, we've already created a pipeline here for the purposes of this demonstration. So moving forward, we're going to hit new pipeline. And the, that takes us to the first tab, location. Here you can search for a location or an area of interest by typing a name or by putting in coordinates or by uploading a GeoJSON or KML file. And that will actually start the pipeline. And what is a pipeline? Well, a pipeline is basically an um, area of interest that you want to get data from. And then what you do is you create that pipeline using the wizard within our EarthCache dashboard. So for the purposes of this demo, we already said, mentioned Dubai, so we're going to actually go and type in Dubai here, and we're looking for Palm Jumeirah. And there it is. So when I select it, you'll notice that the map zooms in and already gives us a predefined AOI with a specific bounding box around that location. Now, if that's not exactly what you're looking for, you could easily delete that or select the pen and draw a new bounding box for your AOI. So we'll just start drawing one. It doesn't have to be a square. It can be as many points as you need it to be. So we're going to just encircle it. Now, once that's done, you'll notice that the map zooms out a bit to give you a better idea or overall picture of your AOI. If you're unhappy with this, 
you could hit the trash bin, which deletes the selections that you've made, and then you could just draw it again. So we'll just draw a new one. Once again, you notice the map centers on the new AOI. And then if you look to the far, far right, you'll see polygon area of 35.19 square kilometers. So that's how many square kilometers within that designated area that you've selected for your AOI. Once you've got that selected, you hit next. This takes us to the output tab. As you can see, there are a ton of options here. Anything from NDVI, panchromatic, thermal infrared, or in the future, we're going to have car counting or shortwave infrared. But right now, for the purposes of this demo, you would select true color image. And you'll notice that the moment I make a selection, the item becomes blue with a white check mark. So this tells you that's what you've actually selected. Again, this is the output. This is the desired uh, type of information you want for your AOI. So once you've selected what you want, select Next. Here is the Settings tab. This is how you configure all of the different details of your uh, pipeline. The brief overview, you have start date, end date, interval, output format, budget, cloud cover, resolution range, name, and finally, tags, which include tag name and tag value. So we're going to go into a little bit of uh, a deeper view on each of these uh, fields and what they mean for your pipeline. So if we look at the start date, the start date is when do you want to start getting data about your AOI? If you were to put the start date in the past, that would be an archival request. You're looking for information that is archived. You could also put your start date in the future. So if you only want to start getting data into the future, like for example in November, that would be a tasking call. What you're doing is you're saying, I want to set up a task to gather data from this point on. If you have both your start date and your end date in the past, that would mean that all you're looking for is archival data. Alternatively, if you have your start date in the past and your end date in the future, that's both an archival and tasking call. Underneath you have interval. The interval is the amount of days that you want to receive information. So if it's every one day you want to see an image or information with regards to your AOI, you would put in one. You could also put in three, five, or whatever you need for your application. If you want to have more advanced options with interval, you could select the advanced icon right here. This opens up the advanced interval settings. And in here, you can actually look at interval slack, which is the duration of time the data is relevant for a user. That would be you. Here, you can set that to as many days as you require as well. What we'll do is we're going to be going into a little bit more depth with that with Scott later. So I'll close that window. Now you have output format. Currently, we support GeoTIFF as the output format by default. In the future, we're going to be supporting JP2, JPEG, and PNG. Underneath, you have budget. The budget is where you would set it any kind of numerical value based on commercial data. But if you're looking just for open data, you can completely ignore this field and leave it blank. Next, you have cloud cover. Currently, you'll see that there's a number of 50 in there. <clears throat> Excuse me. That means that you are looking for information with regards to your AOI up to 50% cloud cover. Underneath you have resolution range. And you'll notice that it goes from 40 centimeters to 30 meter. To the right, we see pipeline name. So this would be the name of your pipeline. And finally, tags. This enables you to set variables uh, for search criteria if you have, for example, 100 pipelines and eight of them or nine of them have the same name, you could select tag names and tag values to find them faster or organize them in a more efficient manner. So what we're going to do for today's demonstration is we're going to create our pipeline and set the past date to March 1st, 2017. So we'll just go back to March 1st in the calendar. Next, we have the end date. We're only going to look for archival data in this uh, example. So we're going to go to March 31st, 2017. We're going to set the interval to 30. 
We're not going to go into interval slack. We're not going to change the geotiff. We're definitely not going to change the budget. And we're going to keep the cloud cover at 50. And we'll also leave the resolution range untouched. Now we're going to name the pipeline Dubai. Once we're done this, we just quickly review that right now we are starting a pipeline with an AOI of Dubai Palm Jumeirah. We're looking for information from March 1st, 2017 to March 31st, 2017. We're looking for intervals of 30 days in the format of a geotiff with up to 50% cloud cover in open data. Once we've reviewed everything here in the settings, we can click Create. Now, after a few seconds, that'll take you to the Results tab. The Results tab will actually start populating information. For open data, it can take anywhere from three to five minutes, sometimes a little bit longer if there's latency or what have you. For commercial data, you can expect to wait a few days based on the, the, our requesting from those vendors. So what we'll do is we'll come back to the Results tab and we're going to look at the Code tab. Now for you developers out there, the Code tab is a breakdown of the pipeline. Now that you've created an active pipeline, you have now generated the code so that you can take that code and put it into any application that you're developing. It then highlights all of the code of the call. So if you look at Get Results, you'll see Get Configuration, Post Configuration, Put Configuration, and Delete AOI. If we want more detail, I could click on Post Configuration and expand it. And here you'd see a breakdown of the call and its information. I'm highlighting, for example, that we selected cloud cover at 50%. I'm highlighting the output format of GeoTIFF. And I'm also highlighting the start date of March 1st, 2017. <clears throat> so what we'll do is we'll close this. And we're going to go back to the results tab and we're going to look at a previous pipeline that we had created so that we can actually take a look at what we've found from our, uh, from our pipeline. So if I click on the download button at the bottom, and I open this file. You'll see a nice picture of Palm Jumeirah in Dubai. Now the detail will change, of course, based on your resolution request. Again, if you're looking for commercial, you'd be able to get far sharper imagery. But right now, this is an open source image and it's pretty good. Now what we can do is after we're done this and we've found one result, if I close this window, you'll see that there are multiple results for the date range that we've selected for that pipeline. At any point in time, you could download those and see what information that you have to get or what information is available to you in the active pipeline. So to review, we're able to log in, create a pipeline based off of a name or a location or a KML or GeoJSON. We can select our output. We put in our configurations and then we select results. We can then take that code and we can apply it to any type of file or um, application that you're developing and you can keep your active pipeline going for as long as you want. So there you have it. Now, if you have any questions, you can always contact us here at support at skywatch.co and we're always happy to hear from you. I'm gonna pass this over to Scott and again, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Andre. Hi, everyone. Um, as mentioned, I'm Scott. I'm the product marketing manager here at Skywatch. And um, now that we've created a pipeline and ready to build an application, I wanted to revisit a few uh, important pipeline and platform points that Andre touched on. Now that uh, integrating your application with EO data is now affordable, it's much easier than dealing with multiple data providers, and we ensure that you get the data that you need when you need it. And so to begin, the first important point is that our Earth Cash platform is budget friendly. There's no minimum purchases. Traditionally, working with a data supplier requires minimum, minimum, excuse me, minimum purchases, resulting in the acquisition of data being costly and inefficient to use. Our commercial data is priced by our, our data partners. However, we understand that the, most companies do not need data over the entirety of a country, but rather just specific set of smaller locations that you are monitoring. And that's why we decided to only charge for what you use. As you saw from our demo, it's incredibly easy to just pick the areas you want and that's all you'll ever pay for. And of course, our open data, which is the image you saw in the demonstration, is completely free. So there's nothing holding uh, anyone back uh, once they have a key 
to start sandboxing, building and integrating uh, with our platform to get data. Further, there's no large data infrastructure costs. So we have taken care of all the infrastructure and processing power for you. Again, so you get what you need, when you need it, saving you valuable development time. And it's a one-time setup. As you saw with Andre's demonstration, um, you set your pipeline in just a few minutes um, and you are delivered and given the code um, that you need that you can just in input into your application without even necessarily needing the documentation. Again, saving you valuable development time. And there's also free and multiple processing options. In the marketplace, in the outputs that you just saw, there's uh, true color, NDVI, and false color composite options. And we plan on adding many more. And this includes change detection, additional vegetation indexes, and counting algorithms. Uh, counting algorithms uh, could be for counting cars or ships and ports, um, and there's various use cases. The second key point I wanted to touch on today is that you can obtain timely insights with our platform. Multiple data sources, which means fast turnaround times. Open data we can process and deliver in four to six minutes. Commercial data um, is between two and three days, and that's because there, we do more of the pre-processing that I'm going to touch on shortly. Um, we do the pre-processing um, as well as um, the, um, the output processing that uh, is in the, our marketplace, and, um, and then we deliver that to you. But as we bring on more commercial vendors, that time of two to three days is going to substantially decrease, and we'll be able to hit our goal of one-day delivery times. And of course, there's latency options within our platform. Once you, re you only receive the data that you can use, you heard Andre use the term interval slack. This allows you to set your threshold of when that data is still relevant. We won't deliver anything to you after that. So for example, if you're doing emergency response and you need data within two days of setting your pipeline, uh, our platform will work and will only deliver you the data that fits your configuration within that two days and nothing after. Again, you're only going to be delivered what is valuable to you and only pay for what is important and that you can derive insights from. There's also post-processing options available and this is in regards to, specifically to the commercial data. So the data that we're going to deliver to you is going to be ready to be used. So there's no need to worry about the pre-processing options such as orthorectification, pan sharpening. We're going to take that pain point away and we do that for you. And again, you get the data regularly. Five minute, one time setup at set intervals configured how you need it based on your requirements. And of course, there's the ability to make tweaks, tweaks and adjustments through either the UI or programmatically via puts. And the last component of this uh, key point of obtaining timely insights is that we are built for machines. That's what our platform specializes in. We accept and we are um, able to integrate with whatever programming language you're using. It's no problem at all. And we've also included webhook functionality uh, where uh, when results are delivered, we will uh, send webhook notifications to your application to, to let you know that the results are ready for pickup. And the final point I want to touch on today is that um, it's just that easy to get started with EarthCache, um, as you saw with Andre. But it's not just for uh, your dev developer team. It's great for the whole organization. And to circle back to the dev team, it's a single ac access point to multiple data sources. It has an easy to use interface and provides you with the code needed to get uh, building with your application. You have a variety of options for input files such as uh, KML or GeoJSON, uh, output processing, true color, NDVI, false color composites, and then as we move forward, there's going to be many more indexes and algorithms and output file formats, JP2, GeoTIFF, PNG, and JPEG. And we provide these options to give you the flexibility, all dependent on your use case and the requirements and, uh, that you have and how you want to use and consume and manipulate the data of uh, the Earth observation uh, data. And of course, for your accounting and legal teams, there's no contracts to sign, decrease the need for multiple invoices, meaning not having to have invoices, with several data providers and contracts set with each individual data providers, which can take up to six months to sign and complete. So you don't have to worry about that. You just have to set up uh, with us, and it's a really painless process. 
We also have global distribution rights. We're allowed to distribute our data um, around the world. So no matter where you are or where you need your data, um, we can deliver that for you. And of course, we're budget friendly. Only pay for what you can afford. With the budget function, you can plan and allocate your spend accordingly, from sandboxing to application testing to commercialization of your app. Um, and that's really uh, so simple, it's so affordable, and um, we offer um, zero barriers of just diving in, sandboxing with the open data, and when you're ready to move to the commercial side, um, we offer that as well. So in, in summary, we hope that this webinar um, with this webinar, you understand how affordable it is to get timely data with an easy-to-use platform. Um, at this point, I'm going to hand it back over to Maureen to field some questions, but I'm going to stick around um, and answer them for you. Thank you, Scott. Um, and thank you, everyone, for attending and for asking us a bunch of questions. So we're a little bit crunched on time, so we're going to try to answer as many as we can. And if we didn't get the chance to get to your question, don't worry about it. We'll just email you right after this webinar with the answer. So the first question that uh, we're going to start with is, what commercial data sources do you have? Great question. We have two uh, data sources ingested on the commercial side. And that includes the TripleSat constellation as well as the CompSat constellation. Uh, those resolutions range from uh, 40 centimeter to 1 meter um, optical resolution. Thank you, Scott. Uh, next question. What are your revisit rates above northern Europe? Ooh, that's, a, that's a really good question, too. Um, uh, I'm going to start on the open data side. On the open data side, we're looking at 14 to 16 day revisit rates. Um, and then we're delivering that uh, in uh, four to six minutes um, for processing time. On the commercial side, uh, the revisit rates for a satellite would be uh, roughly 24 hours. Um, delivery time, because of what I was mentioning earlier with the extra um, post-processing or pre-processing options uh, to, for, to take the raw data into something that is uh, usable uh, for you to derive insights from, um, takes a little bit longer. So we're delivering that in two to three days um, but again, as mentioned earlier, once we uh, bring on more of those data providers, that uh, time to delivery is going to substantially decrease. Thank you, Scott. Next question. Uh, what is the sign-up cost to get started with EarthCache? Are there any hidden fees? No sign-up costs, no hidden fees. You uh, get a key through our website. Um, once you uh, receive that welcome email, um, you hit the uh, activation token, set your uh, password, you enter the uh, dashboard, and then you are ready to go. Um, and really, again, um, there's nothing holding you back from getting started with the uh, open data, sandboxing, exploring the platform, um, and then moving over to commercial. So the only time you're ever going to pay a, a dollar um, using the Earth Cash platform is uh, when you consume and use the commercial data. Thank you, Scott. Next question, how long is your API keys valid for? There are no expiries with the API keys. Um, the welcome email that you receive and to set up your account has a 30-day uh, limit. But once you have created your account from the welcome email, uh, there is no, um, no expiry and your key um, is activated for the foreseeable future. Thank you, Scott. And now last question before we wrap up. Um, will I be able to get the slides? Of course you will. We'll send you a recording. Don't worry about it. Um, and thank you, everyone, so much for attending. As I mentioned, if we haven't had the chance to answer your question, we will get back to you. And so in closing, uh, we hope you enjoyed the webinar and are ready to build your applications incorporating EO data with EarthCache. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us at support at skywatch.co. You can see our phone number there is 1-888-882-8232 and also 24-7 uh, access to our documentation site um, docs.skywatch.co. Thanks so much, everyone, and we hope to see you building soon.